I am about to tell you a tale. A tale that needs your intervention. A young man named Aimel ventured home after a successful show. High off the audience members' adorations, it was a wondrous day. But soon, that day would turn to night, and his cheerful demeanor was about to take a turn for the worse. Make me happy, make me feel this way. Ain't nobody, nobody, but nothing but the Sugar! I knew I should have took this car in to get serviced. Damn. Okay, think. Think what to do, what to do. And just like that, Ainel's fate was decided. He was to take the cautious route and pull over by the side of the woods. I hope you chose wisely. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to the gamification, the quarry review. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Ainel, and welcome to my gamification channel. Firstly, I'd like to thank our growing group of over 4,000 subscribers and invite any new viewers to click that subscribe button and join our rapidly growing community. 2K Games provided us with an early review copy of the game, but they've had no say in regards to the opinions expressed or the content of this review. They are watching this at the same time as you. Now, let's get into the quarry. The Quarry is a horror title by Supermassive Games. They're based in Guildford, Surrey in the UK. This time, the game is published by 2K Games and is their spiritual successor to their runaway hit Until Dawn, released exclusively on the PS4 back in 2015. The Quarry, like its Dark Pictures Anthology siblings, is a multi-platform horror experience released on PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and series consoles, and Steam on PC. Now. I've got a little confession to make. I'm a bit of a scaredy cat when it comes to horror movies and games. Don't get me wrong, I've seen films such as The Devil's Rejects and Get Out. I've also played titles like Dead Space and the Resident Evil franchise, but I won't lie in saying that I don't enjoy being scared that much. For this title though, I wanted to make the effort. I wanted to experience the scary, cheesy, campy fun that makes up the majority of Supermass's recent catalogue of titles. Pop, pop, peanut butter, butter pops. So, I'm going to be approaching this as a horror newbie, a horror tourist, a day tripper, to see if this game stands up. Also, I'll do my best to avoid as many spoilers as possible, and I'll only be showing footage from the first couple of chapters in the game. 
Just before we get in, I experienced this game on a mid-range Corsair 1 Pro PC with an Intel Core i7 quad-core processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM and an Nvidia G-Sync GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. It's hardly top of the range, but I managed to play this on high, locking the game to 30 frames per second. And it was a thoroughly enjoyable experience. This game can be played with keyboard and mouse, however I chose to play with an Xbox Elite controller. Occasionally, on some extreme character close-ups and aggressive aperture depth, I would see the frame rate drop into the mid-teens, but otherwise, stability was pretty consistent throughout my roughly 10-hour adventure playthrough. And the hiccups I experienced was probably down to my rapidly aging PC. The story takes place as the sun sets on the last day of summer camp. The teenage counsellors of Hackett's Quarry throw a party to celebrate. No kids, no adults, and no rules. But, as you can predict, things quickly take a turn for the worse. As night draws in, they find themselves hunted by blood-drenched locals and something far more sinister lurking in the woods. The teens' party plans unravel into a nightmarish night of horror. Friendly banter and flirtations give way to life or death decisions as relationships build or break under the strain of unimaginable choices. Yes, freaking way. Pop, pop, peanut butter, butter pops. Pop, pop, pop them in your mouth. Pop. You play as each of the nine camp counselors Abby, Jacob, Emma, Ryan, Dylan, Laura, Caitlin, Nick and Max. Each with their own distinct personalities, you're plunged into a thrilling cinematic tale where every choice shapes your unique story from a tangled web of possibilities. Any character could be the star of the show or die before daylight dawns. So what makes this an effective horror game? Well, what Supermassive does well here is nailing the atmosphere. Horror aficionados will recognize the typical tropes and will no doubt unravel the peculiar goings on way before their on screen characters do. But what works well is the knowing that something disastrous is about to happen, you're just not entirely sure when. Constantly, your expectations are being played with. Traditional horror scenarios are presented, but they don't always go the way you'd expect. Shots linger on negative space for way too long. Camera cuts effectively convey that you're being observed by someone or something. And Supermassive do a remarkable job of keeping you, the player, on edge and in a state of readiness as you try to protect the unknowing teens in this dark, twisted nightmare. Sound similarly plays a huge role in creating the tension and that feeling of unease in the quarry. Your ears hone in on each individual footstep and suddenly, you begin to panic when you can hear more pairs than there are on screen. This really needs to be experienced with a nice surround sound setup or some good headphones to do this game justice. Graphically, Unreal Engine is still unrivaled when it comes to convincing looking humans and Supermassive has harnessed the technology available to truly bring these characters to life. The characters look uncanny to their real life counterparts and for most of the game, I was gobsmacked at how lifelike they were. Immediately from the jump, you'll notice the natural, playful, often improvised feeling of a lot of the dialogue. You could tell that they workshopped these scenes countlessly to really emphasize the play and banter between the main cast. Characters talk over each other, mutter, often stutter and get tongue tied in situations that you don't normally experience in video game performances. Why'd you kill the music? I think you know why. Um, <laughs> I don't think I do. It begins with an L? Like the L word? Lesbians? Lost, Max, we're lost. We're just, we're in geographic flux. Right, so, lost. That's debatable. It helps that much like a traditional horror, you have a mix of different personalities that bounce off of each other quite dynamically during set pieces. You have the up himself jock, the vain influencer, the shy girl too nervous to declare her love for a boy she has a crush on, the brooding loner. Intentionally cliched as it sounds, this is what makes Supermassive's take on horror games work. They are more akin to their horror movie brethren like Sleepaway Camp, 
than they do with Konami's Silent Hill franchise. Horror enthusiasts crave that campiness, those light-hearted moments sprinkled throughout the out-of-this-world horror elements. It strangely grounds the characters, endears their exaggerated personalities to the audience and helps the juxtaposition between them and the horrors that await them. The actors do a fine job in performance capture of bringing these individuals to life with a star-studded cast of some of Hollywood's finest. For me, my favourites were Justice Smith from Generation and Detective Pikachu. He plays a rather understated Ryan, whose awkwardness really shines through with the motion capture on display. So, uh, what, what did you need me for? Also, Ariel Winter's portrayal of the endearing Abigail is absolutely fantastic too, with a lot of subtle facial expressions that connects the player to how she's feeling rather than having to vocally communicate it. Speaking of which, we should, we should probably, yeah, get back. Oh yeah, worried Nick's, you know, gonna leave without you. Well, no, they're probably like all waiting for us. Mm-hmm. Everyone's waiting for us. Everyone, yeah. Nick, waiting for you. All, everyone, see Not everything is sunshine and rainbows though. There are elements of scene awkwardness where player choices are no doubt swaying the direction of certain situations, resulting in scenes petering out unconvincingly at times. I only found this to be a minor nitpick and was only really noticeable towards the final act of the game when previous decisions were coming into play. The presentation of the game is of such a high standard that these quirks of this being a video game stood out to me in what feels like an otherwise flawless execution of a teen horror flick. The game. The experience. The counsellors aren't the only characters you encounter at camp. You do bump into a number of weird and wonderful individuals throughout your time at Hackett's Quarry, of which I won't spoil for you here. Although, breaking up the action, much like Supermassive's other titles, is the enigmatic Eliza, played by Twin Peaks star Grace Zabreski. Scattered throughout the game are hidden tarot cards of which, if discovered and brought back to Eliza, she can offer some vague foresights on the events to come. It's up to you, the player, to ignore or heed her advice as the quarry only gives you free lives in order to save as many counsellors as possible. Upon a character death, you're given the opportunity to rewind and replay a scene in order to save them, or choose to let that character perish in the hopes of storing a life for a character you like more. Run out of lives and you'll be sitting upright and alert when your favourite character is on screen and is involved in a compromising situation. The rewind feature is on by default if you have the deluxe edition, however for the standard version this feature can be unlocked after a first playthrough. This feature can be turned off completely in the accessibility options for purists who want all their actions to have consequences. Okay. Well, uh, look, it's not that big of a deal, okay? We'll just spend one more night here. No! No! Just stop! Let me think. Luckily, the quarry offers animated tutorial videos right before introducing a new mechanic to a player. In keeping with the summer camp theme, these animated interstitials are a pleasant break from the horror, but not without instilling its own comic dread within you. If you've played a super massive game before, none of these mechanics will be foreign to you, although I am slightly disappointed that since this game is multi-platform, the controls don't take advantage of the controller in any unique ways, like Until Dawn did with the DualShock 4. We do have the hold the button to hold your breath mechanics and the usual QTEs associated with these games, but it would have been nice to experience some new gameplay ideas into this genre that Supermassive are so obviously great at. I'd love to see optional gameplay elements utilising controller microphones and headsets, having to directly call out to characters warning them of impending danger or be extremely quiet during tense moments. If a jump scare made you audibly scream for instance, Maybe that could spell bad news for the in-game character too. Going even further, maybe optional eye detection software could be used for this genre of games, like with webcams and PlayStation cameras. Making direct eye contact with villains and monsters could prove costly, or maybe shifting your eyes away could compromise a situation that needs unflinching focus. Supermassive games are no doubt the masters of this style of horror game, with very little competition from the rest of the gaming industry. I'd love for them to implement some new gameplay ideas for future successes to this title.
in regards to the gameplay modes available in the quarry, we have couch co-op, where it's a pass the pad mode where you and your friends can control each individual character. There's a movie mode for those that just want to sit back and enjoy the ride and online multiplayer modes, which unfortunately was not available for me to test out and won't be available at launch due to time constraints. Supermassive games and 2K games have promised that this will be included with a patch before the 8th of July 2012. I will say though, this game is crying out for a Twitch extension to allow for live streaming communities to help them make decisions together. And although this can be finished in around 10 hours or so, there's lots of replay value in discovering all of Hackett Quarry's secrets. In regards to accessibility options, open dyslexic fonts can be used for subtitles as well as customising subtitle backgrounds, sizes and descriptors for action sequences. Each gameplay element can also be assisted with options for easier QTEs as well as lengthening the amount of time for button inputs and choices. It's great to see more developers thinking of the vast range of players that would love to experience their games and providing inclusive measures to accommodate for that. All in all, for someone who isn't a horror fan, I very much enjoyed The Quarry. It is a melding of several mediums. Whenever you watch a horror movie, right, it's at the back of your mind you always wonder if you ever found yourself in these otherworldly situations, you'd like to think that you'd react differently in the moment. The Quarry is that opportunity to enact that fantasy, with branching paths and hidden secrets, nods to other horror properties, the works. Like Until Dawn, The Quarry knows exactly what it wants to be, knows who it's for, and it doubles down on what makes this style of horror unique to those that love it. The story may be predictable, but much like any decent horror, the quarry is all about the ride. The adrenaline running through your body as you know a scare is inbound, the endorphins your body releases as your character manages to escape a hairy moment to survive another day. The communal joy that comes from experiencing this with friends as you try to keep your campers alive. When it comes to its production values, its performance capture, the cast, visuals, audio designs, Supermassive Games have found their niche and their corner of the gaming industry where they reign supreme. If you're like me and you're a bit of a scaredy cat or you want to try a new experience and something different and new outside of your usual box of games, then definitely pick up The Quarry. It's a super fun single player experience, but I would suggest waiting for the multiplayer patch to be released and picking it up and experiencing this with friends. I've been Inel and thank you very much for watching this review. Are you like me and these kind of games tend to scare you a little bit? Or do you plan to pick this game up and play it with your friends? Whatever you choose to do, let me know in the comments below. There's still loads of secrets to discover around the quarry, so try to keep spoilers to a minimum. Once again, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing to the channel. Gamification, we try to do lots of different unique things here on the channel and I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have, then maybe share it with a friend. Also, you can catch me on Twitch three times a week where I stream various different games on my channel. Thank you once again to 2K for providing me a copy of this game and until next time, thank you for watching.